Welcome, guys, to a special Tuesday edition of Two Guys and Hockey Talk. I'm Evan. I'm Bavel. And we're here to talk hockey with you guys. Hey, Bavel. I'm pretty yeah. excited. We got a lot of stuff to cover. So this week, you took off for this weekend, so we couldn't get our Tuesday mm-hmm. edition. I'm going to be gone for the Thursday edition. So I think we owe them a fully packed Tuesday edition. 100%. And there's a lot of news to get through, so we're excited. Right. And we're thankful that you're tuning in on a different time. We'll try to get back to our regular session on Sundays. But just this week has been a little chaotic for us. And you got to understand we both have lives and both love getting out there. So we hope you're all enjoying a bit of the sunshine like we are. And, uh, yeah, let's get back into hockey. There's quite a bit of news. So, Evan. Great. Let's get started. To- what do you got? So, um, I don't know if you heard, there are a couple of the announcements for the trophies uh, have been announced uh, with the candidates. So, we've got the Norris Trophy and the Vesna's Trophy. So, let's start with the Vesna's Trophy. We've got Connor Hellebuck from Winnipeg Jets. We've got Andre Vasilevsky from Tampa Bay Lightning. And we've got Tuka Rask from Boston uh, Bruins. Now, all three goalies, incredible seasons, doing great. But if it comes down to your vote, who are you picking? I'm taking Rask. I'm taking Rask. Okay. I like Hellebuck. Uh, I think he's done a great job playing with uh, a pretty new defense. Not a lot around him. He's done a great job with them this year. I think he's the reason that uh, they've even got as far as they have. Um, Vasilevsky, the guy makes incredible stops. But, I mean, he has a solid D. But when I look at Boston, I think Boston's defense is overrated because Rask is, is, is really the goalie for me. So I'm going to take Rask. Who do you got? No, valid point, valid point. Um, my vote goes to a Connor Hellebuck just because of everything that he did this season and because the Winnipeg just lost essentially the right-hand side of D, right? They lost Jacob, uh, Jason, or Jacob Truba. They lost Dustin Bufflin to some issues. They lost Tyler Myers to being uh, traded to uh, or picked up by um, a, a Vancouver Canucks. So, you know, losing all that and then having somebody like a guy like Neil Peon come in from a trade for Truba uh, from New York Rangers, Neil Pionk. <laughs> I mean, the guy had a great season, Good but you know, he, him. you know, he, he can only do so much. Right. And he and, was an unknown you know, we, for this year, really. Exactly. And what, what, uh, you know, Poli- uh, Paul Maurice was able to do with that team and especially getting Patrick Liney to play defensively, because as you know, he was an offensive superstar and people were touting him as potentially the next Alexander Ovechkin who can score a lot, but just yeah. never got any points. And now he's all about the assists. He's the all about the AA. So, yeah. So, you know, Hellebuck has been phenomenal. I think he deserves it. It's his second year being nominated. Plus, uh, he had the most shots against him this year um, uh, than any other goalie. Had the most shootouts. And... He, I think there was a game where he had 52 shots against him, and it was against San Jose. So the man, you know, he had a lot of shots. And if that's, I have that's who's got choose, my vote. If I have to choose between Rask and Hellebuck for to take a goalie from my franchise, I'd take Hellebuck. But the reason I don't take this one is because if we were in the round of 16, he would not have made the playoffs. And I can't give a Vesna to a goalie who didn't make the playoffs. Again, no fault of his. Like you said, everything lines up. When you're playing with the defense like they have, I mean, they're taking no-name players, essentially, or what we would call third-pairing guys, and they're making them good players. So good on him. Good on him. Yeah. So what else we got? And, oh, oh yeah. just to add to that, but we'll yeah. get into the North. Um, to add to that, I think Rask had an even incredible year last year. I mean, he, he took the Boston Bruins all the way to the Stanley Cup final. So I understand why he would be an excellent choice for a vote. And, I mean, he played unreal. It took him a bit to get going, but last year he rolled. Yeah. But, um, you know, to, to be a good goalie, you need a good defensive core. And so we do have the Norris Trophy uh, nomination. So we've got Roman Yossi from the National Predators, their captain. we got John Carlson, who had yeah. an incredible season and was putting up almost a point per game, more than most offensive players in the game. And you know how talented the NHL is. Yeah. And you've got uh, uh, oh, Victor Hedman from uh, Hedman. Tampa Bay Lightning, who, again, he's a beast. Who would want to get past that? I'd have a hard time. And then to go to through Vasilevsky. Huh. Yikes. Who's got your vote? Yeah, that's true. So we got Edmund and we got Vasilevsky. So do they offset one another or what, you know? Uh, okay, I'm going to go with Carlson. He led all defensemen with 75 points in 69 games. He started, came out of the 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 the, the, the woodwork. I mean, he to me, 
I knew he had he was playing well before, but I thought with getting a little older, sometimes when they send a contract, but he, I well, he didn't come out of nowhere. I felt like he came out of nowhere to me, and and he set the house on fire, and he didn't stop. He had a little period of time when he was you know maybe got six points in ten games or something, which is incredible for a defenseman. Um, you know, you think he was a new Eric Carlson or something like that, but 75 points in 69 games, I have to uh, give it to him. As good as Hedman is, he also has Veseleski, just like I guess Veseleski has Hedman. Um, uh-huh. And then, you know, with, Ro- Roman's good. Roman's good. Roman's good. I guess I, I'm just, I'm going to go with the points, though. And okay. Fair what, enough, fair enough. Who are you going to take? I'm going to go with the underdog of Roman Yossi. I mean, he came in, you know, the, he was named captain, you know, after Mike Weber stepped down, you know, and the, the natural predators have struggled this year, right. A little bit. I mean, I'm excited about the series with Arizona because it'll it'll be a defensive style game as all coaches like, and I secretly love, you know, even though from time to time I do enjoy watching a game where there's an offensive blow up like Toronto versus Carolina Christmas or just before it's like eight, six, (laughs) <laughs> Fun games. Coaches don't love those games at all. But nope. uh, I think Roman Yossi, you know, he brings <laughs> Roman Yossi brings the stability to that team. Uh, you know, and, and they've lost some pieces and they had to sign some other people and you know that was a big thing. But yeah. with that blue that's what Nashville is known for, their blue line. And so I'm I think he deserves because he was very under the radar, very quiet, but a very strong season for him. Yeah. But I can see why John Carlson would uh, would be nominated. So Sweet. yeah. 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 And, and uh, so good. No. And speaking of, uh, you know, players being getting ready, you know, training camp has opened. So it's pretty exciting because yeah. a lot of teams have been practicing now. You know, we don't want to start reporting on who's playing where because things are still changing. And yeah. even though people are, you know, maybe testing for COVID, um, as the NHL indicated that they tasted uh, as of Monday uh, over 2,000 tests, 2,618. There was only two players that tested positive. We're keeping that good, you know, good. quiet. And, you know, out of those people, you know, some are training staff, coaches, et cetera, uh, yeah. additional personnel. And people aren't in their bubbles yet. So, you know, we're still waiting. Right. And in terms of uh, the hubs, I know that there was a big storm last Thursday in Edmonton, as you know, Edwin, yeah. uh, a bit of uh, heavy rainfall. And so there were some issues because there was some fears of some videos coming out of yeah. – uh, Rogers Place getting water on the rooftop okay. and Ford Hall. Now, just to be clear with uh, everyone, a Ford Hall is attached to the arena, but it wouldn't impact anything at all. And uh, the OEG group, Oilers Entertainment uh, Management, and Kate's, uh, the owner of the thing, said that they would be ready for the NHL so there wouldn't be any kind of issue. So Absolutely. we're good about that. Absolutely. But what I did want to chat with you about, Evan, a little bit is I know you had some thoughts on NHL uh, EA Games 21 because I know that there's some speculation about who's going to be on the cover, and I wanted yeah, you to we'll about that. fill yes. me in. Yeah. So, so actually, it's interesting that uh, you actually mentioned it. Uh, you're talking about uh, in the hub city right now in Edmonton and with what's happening at Rogers Place. Uh, as you were just mentioning um, uh, a while back with EA Sports and all the different people, well, number one, one of the defensemen who is uh, actually up, it looks like, on EA Sports is very possibly NHL 21. And by the way, it looks like it's going to be around October that's going to be settled in on who the person is going to be. Um, but is John Carlson is very likely. He's ranked number four as a possibility with his 75 points in 69 games. Very different. Uh, Edmonton's own Leon Dreisaitl, of course, you know, two back-to-back years, 100-plus points, 50 goals score. Um, I mean, could have been like a 130-point season for him had the NHL not shut down early. But because he plays with Connor McDavid, a lot of his chances are, are going to be – they're saying that he's probably going to rank in around third for coming in because of playing with McDavid. Otherwise, he might have been a hands down if another Oiler had not. But uh-huh. interesting enough, coming back to that, you're talking about Oilers. Now, there was the first time this has ever happened in the history, um, a petition by NHL players, not Oiler players, but NHL players, after the tragic death of 25-year-old Edmonton Oilers forward Colby Cave, they led a petition to get him on the cover of NHL 21 mm. as a tribute, which would be amazing. And, and while I don't think it's going to happen, I think it's wonderful. 
that they were actually able to even get his name out there as just an honor for him. Yeah. So David Pasternak is the other one, which I know you had mentioned oh. he could be put into there. He's not 100%. a fancy player, but man, the guy loves having fun. You got to follow his tweets. Uh, uh, if you go on your Twitter and stuff like that, this guy has fun playing hockey and he interacts with NHL fans. He probably does more than a lot of them, but the number one choice right now, right now is Nathan McKinnon because uh. EA Sports NHL franchise has always long been about their speed and their skill. And let's face it, there's not a better cover athlete for NHL 21 that is so explosive other than Connor McDavid, which I put him right side by side right now. Uh -huh. um, Nathan McKinnon, he is an absolute force on the ice, and he's electrifying to watch. And I think he's going to hit NHL 21. So that's my best guess on that. Yeah, I can see that. Can I tell you a quick little story about David Pasternak? Yeah, it's really yeah. funny. So last year, I think it was last year. Don't uh, don't sue me on the uh, timeline or you know, no problem. Throw me under the bus, you know. So all the commenters, you know, just you can clarify later. But what had happened was somebody had posted um, it, somewhere in the in the states that they had hit a vehicle, and they sent a text to their dad and said, "Hey, I just hit uh, a vehicle, and it's David Pasternak." And the dad's like, "What?" And then they have a photo together, and it's like a cute photo op of just. The guy, a random young guy, holding hands with David oh, Pasternak. Hey. I'll try to look it up and, and post it on our site. But, yeah, it's like you just hit David Pasternak's vehicle, like this brand-new vehicle. I can't even remember the vehicle. It was a while back. So, <laughs> you know, imagine, imagine that's how you get an autograph from a celebrity hockey player, right? <laughs> and then you owe them a lot of money, even though they can afford a lot of vehicles. So just – we're going to share that. Oh, man, that, that's so cool. You know, and it's really neat to see when you see real life – happening there you know with players you know the people we we idolize them so much and we forget they're just like you and i and they have a oh, different yeah. job and a different career and different skill you know so yeah. great, great 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 info i love that story yeah fun little <laughs> stuff so the other thing i wanted to just quickly share with our uh fans and friends is uh that max doby has been cleared to play so i know that there's been rumblings about certain players awesome. uh that had to get an opinion about uh whether they can get a play. And that was one of the agreements in the CBA. Uh, you had to get the physician for your team. And then if they didn't, uh, you didn't agree with that decision, the player could opt out to get a second opinion from another physician outside of the organization. Yeah. And so they wanted to wait seven to 10 days because as you all know, Max told me, uh, does have diabetes. And he wrote a book about it. Uh, uh, mine has been ordered. I'm still waiting to get it, but I'm excited to read about his history. And of course, I enjoyed watching his dad, you know, and watching how his father was a uh, Toronto Maple Leaf and now he's a, uh, you know, Montreal Canadian. So a little bit yeah. of rivalry, but definitely Montreal Canadians will benefit with him in the lineup. Yes. Uh, because he will make that team a little bit better playing center or wing for them. So. Yeah. Yesterday, uh, uh, just a couple days ago here, he just got back on the ice and interesting enough about it. Uh, they said that he hadn't missed a step. He would just fly. I, mm. I saw a few quick videos of their scrimmaging uh, playing on that mm. top line on the right side. So good for Max. He's got things in order. It looks like that he feels that it's going to be safe, you know, with that. Spe speaking of safe, so Jacob Borachek is for you Philly fans. Uh, by the way, Montreal fans are ecstatic that you've just brought that up if they don't know already about Max being back. Max mm. is back. Uh, but yeah. Jake Borchek, uh, just in regarding to protecting players' privacy right now when it comes to COVID, of course, we, we know that, uh, you know, they'll say undisclosed reasons. So if someone leaves the ice, like Crosby left the ice early, uh, when things happen, sometimes they might have COVID, they might not. There was uh, discussion about that around Edmonton when Caleb Jones didn't show up as uh, that extra, as that sixth, seventh defenseman and stuff. Um, later came out that he did. Some have come out that they haven't. So we never no. really know. But this is what Jacob Vorchek said. He says the problem in, the, in his interview with the Philadelphia media, he says that the world, everybody wants to know. And he says, and the only problem is uh, if everybody wants to know, they need to know that we have the right to our privacy. If people 100%. don't know, then they, they shouldn't assume the worst. But here's the problem. Is that because everyone wants to know, it leads to speculation because if they don't know, they're assuming the worst. So interesting enough, I should be more worried that Crosby's leaving the ice because of a lower back injury than if he potentially has been tested positive for COVID. 
Uh-huh. You know? And uh-huh. people are so focused around the COVID. Now, I'd encourage you guys, don't be as focused around the COVID issues when someone player is going off. We, we got to more worry not just about that part of their health, but we don't want injuries uh-huh. that are going to stop these guys from playing. You know, so for me, I'm more worried if it's a leg or a shoulder injury, actually. So, yeah. some thought. And, and to be frank with everyone, people aren't in their bubble cities yet. So, there's exactly. nothing to worry about, right? We're like, at, we're not at the point. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I think exactly. they're supposed to travel the 23rd, so this Wednesday, or Thursday, the 24th, yeah. is the date where they're supposed to make their way. Because we got to remember, a lot of them went home back overseas to Europe, right? We have a lot of yeah. Finnish and Swedish players, which we'll chat in a bit about. But, you know, we had players all over the world staying at home, right? Because they wanted to be close with their families. And now they're traveling back in. And there's always that risk of exposure. So as we say, you know, stay safe. Yeah. Follow protocol, what the CDC is saying. And, yeah. you know, all, all I want to say is that I'm excited for hockey. And I, I was reading some reports that they were saying that if they couldn't make this, uh, the rest of this playoffs work, they were going to scrap this upcoming season as well. And the reason being is because it was financially not viable for the NHL to continue on. And again, it's a $4 billion industry. So it's a lot. And and to get back to that level, it's, it's tough, especially without fans, right? Like we can still buy merchandise. We can still watch on TV, pay-per-view, you know, NHL network connect, but ultimately, you know, the owners want fans in the stands. And so do the teams, they want to be cheered on. So, right. Yeah, yeah. No, exactly. Exactly. It's so, Hey, we got some stuff. Let's talk about around the NHL. Um, so you got some news. We we've had a little bit of discussion about some UFAs. Uh, tell us about mm-hmm. Hopi. So Hopi uh, recently uh, posted, I think to his Twitter or his Instagram page talking about how this may be his last run with the Washington capitals uh, because he is due up for a contract. And as you know, the cap's not going up and, You know, they have some good goalies in the system, in the pipeline, and he wasn't exactly playing his best. However, playing in the playoffs, it's going to be his job to lose because, as you remember, two years ago, he wasn't the starter. It was Grubauer, who is now in Colorado, and I I liked Grubauer. It was somebody that I think that was a good hot hot take, um, whoever picked him up. And he played well last year with Colorado, you know, until that, you know, if he called versus uh, uh, Vegas, was it, or San Jose Sharks. Right. And uh, so um, hope he said he may play his last game as a Washington capital. So for all you capital fans, don't get upset with us. This is what his thoughts are. It's possible. Hope he's on the move in the coming uh, fall to a different team. It's, and it is really tough, isn't it? Because I mean, he needs, if he wants a lucrative deal, he needs to play well. Uh, but if he plays well, do, do you want to maybe find a way to re-sign him for another year or two if you're Washington? And here's the other thing with a flat cap, it's going to be tough to re-sign somewhere. Um, or do you do like we've talked about with players like Hall who are coming up, are they going to have to sign like a one or a two year with a little lower hope that they can build and be, be, you know, like, yeah, uh, well, I guess technically it's, it's, it's not so much a bridge deal if it's a UFA, but same concept though. Like, yeah, I hear what you're saying. So yeah. I, and that, and that's going to be interesting, but I mean, Washington, I mean, uh, they're, they're poised and I think Holpe's going to get the chance out of the blocks, but if he falters, you know, he's now on the side and who knows who there, there is going to be some good goalies available this season 100 oh and the other thing is uh the vegas knights we've been talking a little bit about leonard leonard really Mm -hmm. likes vegas and wants to stay but for him to stay with the money and seven million wrapped up in mark andre Fleury, they're gonna have to look at unloading at least two other players now you can start Mm -hmm. going to the the vegas team we can even do that in another time of who you can let go but remember when you got uh no move uh clauses uh no you, you you can't be traded anywhere to except 10 teams that makes it really hard to unload big contracts and the bad players yeah. nobody wants them so how are you going to clear yep. up that space right so 100 and can, also can to think about the expansion yeah oh yeah because who if you're signing them long enough you're going to need to know they're going to be exposed or you're going to have to yeah. protect them in that expansion so okay so uh something else tyson berry another ufa so we, he had a lot of productive years in Colorado, um, but he definitely had a really difficult 2019 campaign with the Leafs. 
uh, which is interesting because I actually expected him to blossom uh, there. Mm. He is not expected to be resigned. He'd he'd like to resign, but I mean, it, it's not like it, this is you know this is my hometown. This is where I live, and this is where I want to stay for the, you know the rest of my career. But a solid effort in these playoffs could get him probably a good one or two year deal, uh, maybe similar to his five point five, which he's been bringing in. Uh, so mm, he, he wanted he wanted eight. He, he wanted, wanted eight before. Eight. He wanted eight yeah. before. But when you've had a down season like this, and you're going into a flat cap for two years, everyone's dreams are going to have to drop just a little bit. So this is going to be mm. beneficial, I think, to making some really. I I still think the free agent season is going to be crazy because someone's going to bid too much, and then they're going to be yeah. desperate to get rid of some other contracts. So. Yeah, and it it will depend on who sets the tone. Will it be Hall or Petrangelo or even Krug? And exactly. what they get will set the market, right? Yeah, exactly. So interesting, interesting. Talking about Eastern Canada, uh, the Quebec Junior Major Hockey League. Uh, not not sure what's going to happen. I haven't heard with the OHL, the WHL of the Canadian uh, Hockey League, but the Q is making a plan. They're they're still planning to open up uh, training camp in uh, in uh, to go into around October. Is what they're saying. They're going to have shorter play, so maybe drop ten games off their season or so, and have three divisions making up of interdivisional play. So there's actually less travel, so that they can lower the risk of COVID nineteen uh, transmission this coming season. Right. So. Uh, which, which should be kind of interesting because they're also, this is the other thing with the queue. They're only going to run about 65% of the camp invites. When you run lower on invites, this is where young guys get a chance to shine is in some of these mm-hmm. camp invites. So it's going to make it a lot harder for players to be seen this coming season. So I'm interested in what the rest of the Canadian Hockey League is going to do. Yeah, it'll be interesting to watch. It should be so. And then the, just a short little bit of news. I'm not sure many of you probably remember uh, Alexei Kovalev. So uh, some of his better years being in Pittsburgh and also in Montreal. So he has just been named in the KHL as the new head coach um, of the Cunlam Red Star. In oh, okay. So, uh, and That's if fun. you're not familiar, so yes, uh, in Beijing, they have a KHL team. They are, and there's been a lot of rumor now, of course, COVID's really made things more difficult, but the KHL is trying to expand even into places like Finland. And so there's talk about maybe bringing the other leagues somehow in. Um, so mm-hmm. who knows what's going to happen? It's going to all come down to this though, in the end, right? Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. But uh, Interesting. Yeah. Some so, great news there, Evan. Thank you. Well, how right. much time we got, Evan? <laughs> okay so what else we got are we ready well or do we got a couple more I, before are we, jump we have a couple more lip? things i'd like to quickly run through our team sweden for the 2022 Let's projected olympics all right okay, okay so, so this, let me the swedish 2022 olympic team correct yes okay Let's do it i'll give you my i'll give you my first two lines and then we can you know have some uh, agreements so okay. starting off that line is nicholas backstrom he is in the center. On the left side, we got Nick, uh, 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 Mika Zibanejev from the Rangers. Oh, okay. And we got Philip Forsberg from, uh, what's it called? From Nashville. Wow. Okay. 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 Second line. So my top six. Yeah. I've got Eli- uh, Elias Pettersson from Vancouver yeah. with William Nylander on his uh, right. Yeah. And Elias Lindholm from Calgary on his left. Oh, Wow. Okay. Hey, you're yeah. really mixing it up compared to me here. Okay. Yeah. What do you got? Or do you okay. want me to keep well, going? Well, I, 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 I went with Nicholas Backstrom. I don't think you can, you can miss on Backstrom. Um, yeah. But uh, on his left wing, I put Landeskog, Gabriel Landeskog. Oh, uh, okay. On his right wing, I'm having a hard time with the right wing because I know you can move his center out, but I'm trying to keep a strong center line for Team Sweden. Mm-hmm. Uh, and mm-hmm. they're known to kind of go with workhorses. So I put Patrick Hornquest. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Playing a lot with guys like Crosby. And, and so I yeah. got Scott with Backstrom and, and Hornquest. On the second line, I went with Elias Pedersen down the middle there, um, keeping him in the middle instead of putting him on the wing. I know he yeah. could easily be moved to the wing just for experience. And then I put Philip Forsberg on his left side. 
Uh, oh, okay. Two okay. Skills together. But again, I kind of put another kind of a dark horse, Victor Arvidsson from Nashville. Mm. I threw yeah. him on that right side as well. Okay. So who do you got down in your bottom uh, six? My bottom six. All right. So that's where I got third line Gabriel Aniskov. That's okay. my third line center. And he is helped by the Anaheim duo, uh, Richard Raquel and Jacob Silverberg. Okay. Oh, you're lining up the Anaheim boys. Yeah. So they know how to play okay. together. And Lana Scott had got that. And okay. my fourth line, I got uh, William Carlson uh, from uh, Vegas Golden Knights. Yeah. And he is winged by Victor Olofsson from uh, Buffalo, who's had a strong year. So Buffalo fans should rejoice. He had a good, good season. And Andre Burakovsky from the Washington Capitals. Barakowski, yeah. I, I, yeah. I baited on Barakowski. I, I mean, that yeah. guy, but he's, he's growing. That was a great deal yeah. for uh, Colorado, by the way. 100%. 100%. He I mean, wasn't good. And then my... Yeah, go, sorry, ahead. go ahead. No, you were going to say, go ahead. I was just going to say, I have uh, Adrian Kempe from LA just as my 13th. Okay. Just bring in Kempe. All right. Yeah. Well, um, because I went with Lanskog, Backstrom, and Hornquist... Forsberg, Pedersen, and Arvidsson on my top two lines. My bottom lines, I put William Carlson centering that line for Elias Lindholm and Gustav mm -hmm. Nyquist. So I put oh, the okay. third line there. Now, you guys are going to hate me, you Ranger fans, but I have <laughs> Mika Zibanejad on the fourth line center. I debated mm -hmm. between him and Carlson centering on the third. Um, and I thought about Mika go playing on the wing, but the guy is good down that middle. Um, so who knows? He can easily move up. But I, I, I kept Raquel. I went okay. from Boston with Zotterberg. Uh, oh, okay. I thought about Zotterberg. And then I was like, oh, my goodness. I forgot all about, so I threw as my 13th guy, uh, William Nylander out of Toronto. So sorry, Maple Leaf okay. fans. Uh, maybe you could throw Zotterberg off, but I think they need a big guy to go with, the big Zibanejad. So uh, I kind of left it there. So what do you got in defense? Okay. Okay, so this is where I got some fun because we have some really incredible players. Oh. Uh, and as you know, they're good for defense, Swedish players. So I've got Victor Hedman on my left side, and I've got Eric Carlson on my right-hand side. Now, that's provided that Carlson is healthy at that point and that yes. he can play. Yes. That's I what I say. That's okay. the only reason I keep him in my top pairing because he is still an elite defenseman, and he got that big contract from Doug Wilson for a reason. So I went slightly different on my top line. I kept Eric Carlson on the right. And again, like you said, as long as he stays healthy. And on the mm -hmm. left side, instead of putting Hedman there, because I wanted Hedman on the second line, uh, okay. I put Matthias Ekholm. So oh, I okay. Ekholm, I was like, oh, I need someone who's going to be a little bit more stay at home. And Victor okay. does like to open up. So that's kind of why I kind of stayed away from that. Okay. So who's your second pairing? Okay, so I got Victor on that left side, but so for the offensive guy, I put John Klinberg out of Dallas. So okay, yeah. Klinberg has that's just, who I got. Yeah, so, so who did you go for on your left side then on your second line? So I went the young, another Buffalo Sabre, Rasmus Zalin, because he's going to be a pro by that point, right? Uh -huh. He's going to really mature, right? And he's, he's, I mean, he was a number one draft pick, right? And he's yeah. playing, he had a good solid year this year. He had about 60 or 70 points, so. He wasn't like a nobody, you know, he played well. Yeah. And he's going to grow into his own. And we're still two years out. And that, that's the other thing to recognize where you're having either to assume or we're underestimating. Right. And uh, that's the thing, right? That's why I, with, with Carlson, I, I worry about his, his foot and his knee just because he's had surgery on that a couple of times. So, yeah. so what do you have for your third pairing? So I went with, of course, Oliver Ekman Larson. I know he's the uh, senior of the bunch. Uh, solid guy, can still play well. And I put Hamptus Lindholm, actually, on my left side. Lindholm had a little bit of a down year last year. Uh, but I, I, I really felt strongly that in a couple of years as he continues his improvement. Um, and so I put Darlene as my seventh of D that I just kind of would hold in there. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I went with a fan favorite, Oscar Clefbaum, uh, on the right-hand side. And he would be paired up with Oliver Ekman Larson because I think he would have brought, uh, brought the, you know, brought You're that. And then my seven. The right. Okay. Clefbaum on the right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And Clefbaum knows how to block shots. He actually blocked the most shots th this past season. Uh, and he just celebrated a birthday. So happy birthday, Oscar. Um, and then my seventh would, I was, I was debating, but I think Matthias Alcombe was, uh, was there, 
but I can see how Edler from Vancouver would have made a case for a seventh defenseman. Wow. But that's kind of, yeah. So who so, do you got so between the pipes? You can put Matias Ekholm in there. He's my seventh, yeah. He's your seventh, but maybe Edler. You heard that. So uh, Pavel yeah. hates on Matias. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Nashville. You, you, you got you got to really feel for these players. They're like, come on, aren't I good enough? It's like, sorry, it's one team out of a country, yeah. right? So, all right, it's a lot of good players. You got on defense. You you share your defense first. A uh, defense. You mean sorry. goalie? <laughs> I mean, well, hey, your your goalie well, is your last line of defense. <laughs> the last line. That's true. That's true. Okay. Well, let's, see, up, let's, see, see, let's do it. Seeing as he's the king of it all, I put Henrik Lundqvist in net. Oh, you're putting the king in at this point in his career in two years. Okay. He still got it. He can still play. Okay. And then as a backup, we've got Robin Leonard, who's right. shown that he can play at an elite level. And then, I mean, depending on how he does, but again, he's had an incredible season this year with Vancouver, because yeah. I'm a Vancouver fan here now, because of my wife, <laughs> is uh, Jacob Markstrom. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. And he's young, too, so he has, he has a lot of upside. Right. And, and again, Henrik can play, you know, as we've talked about, it doesn't have to be a goalie push through all the way. Maybe it's just a tandem, you know, one or the other back and forth. So who do you have? I think, well, I, I didn't go with Lundqvist uh, just because I feel like his days have passed. I mean, he's another two years away uh, with age. So, but not that he couldn't play with that defense. So, <laughs> but I actually went with Jacob Markstrom as my number one goalie for this tournament. Uh, okay. I mean, I, the guy surprised me these last couple of years. I did not think he was as good as he is, but he just gets better and better. And, uh, and, and I see when the, he's also clutch, he seems to be very okay. clutch. So, you know, hats off to, if you're a Canuck fan, good on you, man. You got a good goalie for your future. Yeah. Uh, I feel I, bad I, for Benning. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cause he has to sign all those I know, guys. I know we already got the Hughes, Patterson. Yeah. And he's got the Brock issues. Now he's soon going to have the Markstrom issues. You know, I mean, but yeah, there's no way they're letting him go. But Robin Leonard, as much as the guy has been moved around and as good as he is, I mean, somebody's going to have a gem that's going to be able to sign him this next term. And I, I would suggest to Robin, the next, next contract doesn't matter if they're contender or not. Next team you sign with, make sure that you get paid and make sure it's long-term because you need to stay somewhere. If, he deserves it. And yeah. um, Props to him for getting his life together and everything he went through and the support of the New York Islanders. Lou Lamoretto took a chance on him and gave him an opportunity, exactly. and he did. Yeah. Well, guys, uh, it's time to wrap up. Uh, we've got a full show here again with you guys, so thank you for joining us for our Tuesday special edition of our podcast for two guys and... Hockey Talks. I'm so, Evan. Thanks for I'm Pavel. And, and we love here. talking hockey. And as Evan likes to say, keep your stick on the ice. <laughs> In the so meantime, remember to comment, like, and share. Sorry. Go ahead, Evan. It's okay. In the meantime, <laughs> in the meantime, that's it for another edition of Two Guys in Hockey Talk. Cheers, guys. Stay safe. <laughs>